Sutra. Before the lamps of the walls of the ten directions, those who first accomplished Bodhi, I now request and beseech them all to turn the foremost wondrous Dharma wheel. If there are Buddhas who wish to for Nirvana, I request with deep sincerity that they draw in the wand for as many compass as they are dust most in Shetras to bring benefit and bliss to every being. I worship those with blessings, praise them, and make offerings. I request that the Buddhas remain in the world and turn the Dharma wheel. The good rules gained from following and rejoicing and in merit and virtue and from repentance and reform. I transfer to living beings and the Buddha way. I follow and rejoice in merit and virtue. I repent of and reform my comic forms. Then transfer these good rules as well as blessings that living beings might soon reach Buddhahood. I study with the Buddhas and practice the perfect conduct of universal worthy. I make offerings to all the first commons in the past and to all present Buddhas throughout the ten directions. All future teachers of gods and men whose aspirations to joy have been completed. I follow in study throughout the three periods of time and quickly attain great body. Commentary Before the lamps of the walls of the ten directions. The ten directions include everything. They are the Dharma realm, and the Dharma realm is the ten directions. The lamps of the world are the Buddhas, the shining lights in the world of darkness. Before the Buddha came into this world, it was dark, and Devian teachers of other teachings and paths propounded their doctrines. Devian teachers are those whose knowledge and views are improper. Unable to teach proper knowledge and views, they cause people to enter demonic states. Devian knowledge and views are equivalent to darkness, while proper knowledge and views are a shining light. I have said this many times before. The, the bewildered transmits his bewilderment, passing on his knowledge so that neither understands. The teacher falls into the house and the disciple follows, crashing his way in. This is what happens when a Devon teacher speaks in an improper teaching. The Devon teacher may tell you to take some drug in order to experience the void, and after you have done it, he will certify you, say, this is the void. You have experienced what the void is like. You are certified. To a particular stage, you have reached the fourth dhyana. The fourth dhyana is nothing special and neither are the first, second or the third. They are very ordinary. But by taking this drug, this person has certainly not reached the dhyanas. And yet the Devon teacher says, You've obtained the void. You're, uh, you are the same as the Buddha. Being a Buddha is not much different from this. This is an example of how one causes people to have mistaken knowledge and views and to take the wrong road. This is called bewilderment. Then bewildered, you do not understand, you are mixed up. Bewildered means to be totally disoriented or confused so that you do not know anything. Confused teachers want others to study their confusion. This is the meaning of the bewildered. One transmits his bewilderment, passing on the, his knowledge so that neither understands. When person becomes confused, neither the teacher nor his disciple understand anything. Why are they confused? If a confused person transmits his confusion to another person, they both become confused. This is the case of the blind leading the blind. The blind person feels he can see the way, but in fact he cannot. But he wishes to cheat people and mislead them just the same. This is the meaning of passing on his knowledge so that neither understands. Because the teacher is confused and does not understand how to cultivate, he falls into the house. 
His disciple believes that his teacher certainly could not take a wrong road, so he follows obediently behind him until he reaches the door of the house, which he finds has already closed. So he uses his fist to beat the door down. After he breaks the door down, he sees his teacher, who says, What are you doing here? The disciple responds, You're my teacher, so when you left, I followed you. What is this place? The teacher answers, I still don't know. I don't know which Buddha land this is. After a while, the hungry ghosts and yakshas come and say, You weren't a good teacher. All you did was lie to your disciples and people. So now you are off to the hell of ripping tongues. As for the disciple, he did not treat people, but because he also did evil things, he now falls into the pan of oil to be fried for a while. The disciple screams, Oh, this is really terrible. Since you treated people, you fall into the hell of ripping tongues. You deserve this because you received people. I was stupid enough to study with you. I became confused too and created many offenses. So now I must be fried in this pan of oil. The pain is terrible. His teacher replied, I don't have the mantra to recite now. I'm stuck. I can't save you because I can't save myself. The, this teacher took along his confused disciple when he fell into the hell to suffer. This is the meaning of the bewildered transmitting his bewilderment. When a devil teacher speaks, he causes people to go astray and fall into the hell. If we wish to study and cultivate the way, we should be careful to follow wise teachers. Teachers with intelligence. The principles of wise teachers are always proper and they will not lead people down different paths. Before the Buddha came into the world, there were only the bewildered teachers who transmitted their bewilderment. But when the Buddha came into the world, he was like a sun, like a shining lamp. The Buddha illuminated the world with his light and so the text says, the lambs of the world of the ten directions. Those who first accomplished Bodhi, who first attained Bodhi, everyone is the one who first accomplished Bodhi. What is Bodhi? We, you have heard Dharma Masters explain it as meaning enlightened to the way. What is the enlightenment to the way? When you become enlightened, you will not do any evil acts will only do all kinds of good deeds. This is enlightenment, enlightened to the way. If you only know how to do evil and do not do good, you are also enlightened to a way, but it is an evil way. To understand how to do good deeds and not to do evil ones is to be enlightened to the way, to the proper way. Enlightening to the way is a gradual progression. Gradual progression means going step by step so that you improve yourself more and more. Bodhi is like this. You improve yourself step by step so that you gradually rise to eminence, going from a common person to a Buddha. If you do the opposite, however, and descend step by step, it means that you have enlightened to an evil way. So gradually, Rise to eminence means to have enlightened to a good way. So a superior person does good. Where why the inferior person does evil? The inferior person hurries off to do evil, while the superior person hurries off to do good. Those who first accomplished bodhi are those who first attained Buddhahood. How did one become the first to attain Buddhahood? We know that reciting sutras is cultivation, that reciting mantras is cultivation, and that practicing the bodhisattva path of the six paramitas and the ten thousand practices is also cultivating. But before the first Buddha, no one knew about the six paramitas and the ten thousand practices or how to cultivate. They did not know about pure thoughts or thoughts of enlightenment. So how did the first Buddha know how to become a Buddha? It is said that you can recite the Surah 
Sugra Gamma Mantra from memory. Then for seven lives, you can be as rich as a great oil baron. When some people hear this, they would even risk their life to learn how to recite the Sugra Gamma Mantra from memory in order to be as rich as John Rockefeller. Some people recite the Sutra Suragama Mantra just to seek these blessings, but they are making a mistake. It is true that if you can recite the Suragama Mantra from memory, then at very least for several lives you can have as much money as in great oil barons. But the reason we recite is not to acquire wealth, but to become Buddhas. If you can memorize the Suragama Mantra, then you can obtain Bodhi and gradually rise to eminence so that with each step you improve yourself. If you do not wish to become a Buddha, then you can have the blessings and, and eminence among people. The transcendental attainment of Bodhi is real blessings and eminence. Only if you have Guru's will, you'll be able to memorize the Suragama and Great Compassion Mantras. Without Guru's, you will not be not even be able to hear the names of the Great Compassion and Suragama Mantras. How much the less memorize them, figure it out. How many people have ever heard the Suragama Mantra? How many fewer people have ever recited it? How many people have heard of the Great Compassion Mantra? And how many fewer people have ever recited it? Today I see there are some people teaching others how to recite the Suragama Mantra. This is the best class. You should teach all those who wish to study it so that they are able to recite this mantra from memory. Explain these principles to everyone. If you can memorize the Great Compassion Mantra and the Suragama Mantra, the result will be inconceivable. Not only can you be an oil baron, you can also become the ruler of a country. This is the most inconceivable. We recite mantras and sutras to accomplish Bodhi. What sutras and mantras did the one who first attained Bodhi recite? The one who first accomplished Buddhahood, an immeasurable number of compass ago. At the time when this world began to develop, was already a Buddha, so he did not need to recite anything because he was already a Buddha. You cannot say that he was the first one to accomplish Buddhahood. Have I not said before that whoever accomplishes his karma in the way is the one who first accomplishes Bodhi? Take God as an example. According to the principles of Buddhism, God is transformed from the Buddha. Therefore, he is called God. I now request and beseech them all. All the Buddhas of the three periods of time and those who first accomplished Bodhi to turn the foremost wondrous Dharma wheel. There is nothing higher than the inconceivable wondrous Dharma wheel. So like Chosu Trans is to turn the Dharma wheel. To teach the Dharma is to turn the Dharma wheel. To recite sutras is to turn the Dharma wheel. To hold mantras is to turn the Dharma wheel. To have sutras printed is to turn the Dharma wheel, and even to operate a printing press to print Dharma is to turn the Dharma wheel. It is true. When you turn a printing press, it prints, but if you do not turn it, it does not print. Is this not wonderful? This is a manifestation of turning the wondrous Dharma wheel, a visible analogy for turning the Dharma wheel. In actuality, however, the wondrous Dharma wheel cannot be seen, nor can you conceive of it. The wondrous Dharma wheel is beyond words and exceeds the scope of the mind. Your mind cannot follow its purport. You wish to speak about it, but it is inexpressible. You wish to conceive of it, but it cannot be done. You wish to speak, but there are not words to explain it. And you wish to think about it, but it is beyond the mind. This is to really turn the wondrous inconceivable Dharma wheel. For example, you now say you have not seen a single Buddha in this world. 
First of all, this is because you have no been to very many places. You might realize that you have been all over the globe, but you did not see a single Buddha turning the Dhamma wheel. You may have traveled all around the world, but have you been into space? If you want to see the Buddhas turning the Dhamma wheel, then go into space because there are Buddhas turning the Dhamma wheel there. We now have rocket ships which can go to the moon, but it is not for sure that the astronauts will be able to see them. If they do not see them, does this mean that they do not exist? No. What you cannot see is much more than what you can see. It is not necessary for you to see the wondrous Dharma wheel being turned. In the heavens, there are Buddhas turning the Dharma wheel, and yet you cannot see them. But even though you do not see them, you cannot say that they do not exist. The wondrous Dharma wheel is being turned everywhere. If you understand, then everything is the turning of the wondrous drama wheel. But if you do not understand, then you cannot recognize the turning of the wondrous drama wheel. If you are enlightened, you can see that the myriad phenomena of the world, the world of primary retribution and the world of dependent retribution, all are all turning the Dharma wheel, so it is said. On the tip of her hair, the Buddha manifests the lens of the Druid king and turns the Dharma wheel while sitting in a dust mood. When one person heard my explanation about God, he thought he agreed with me. He said, What you say is correct. God is Buddha and Buddha is God. The names are different. But they are basically the same, just as one person can have more than one name. Isn't this what you mean? No, when I spoke of God, it was meant as an analogy. It is not that God is the Buddha and the Buddha is God. If you do not think that, you are so smart and that you have become enlightened. I will explain the differences between God and the Buddha for you. God lives in a heaven and rules over it. He is the lord of this heaven, the heaven of the 33, also known as the Chayashimsha heaven. In the Suragama Mantra, he is referred to as Yintualaye Indra in line 29, which reads Namo Yintualaye. This line means to take refuge with God. In the past, God was a woman who saw a Buddha image in a temple. The temple was in ruins, and so the Buddha image was exposed to the elements without a roof over its head or walls to protect it. Much like a hobo without any place to live, sitting out in the open amidst some temple ruins and meditating. When this woman saw the Buddha image exposed in the wind and rain, he did, she decided to rebuild the temple. Because she was so poor, she could not do so by herself. So, she got 32 other women together to help her. They finished the temple. When their lives came to an end, they were all reborn in their heaven. The woman became the lord of this heaven, and that is how God came to be. The Buddha, on the other hand, has no beginning and no end. So, when I spoke above about God, I was referring to him metaphorically. In Christianity, it is said that God created everything, that he created all creatures. Who created God? No one. He created himself is the answer given. If God created himself, why he said that we cannot create in the same way? Because you must wait for the God to do the creating, is the reply. This is a very stupid notion which merely shows a total lack of wisdom. Christians also say that only God can be God and that no other being can become God. God then is a solitary God he is the only one who can be God. So he is a, a lone of
people like to have friends, but since no one else can become God, it becomes a very special particular thing. I feel that no one would want to be like this God. It is not very interesting. In Buddhism, God is a drama protector. He does not sit when he is before the Buddha stands. He has a status similar to that of Waitua and Chiraplan Bodhisattva. Why is it that God does not admit that the Buddha is superior to him? Because he is selfish, like the mayor of a country village or like a constable. Constables are found in the country, not the city, since none of the country people have seen the size of the city. The constable can tell them, I'm the most important person in the world. You should follow what I say and everything will be all right. The country people are totally naive, having always been in the country and so they believe the constable. They think he is the greatest and highest person. The God of Christianity is like this. Only I am honored. I am the greatest. But if you want to examine and frankly openly discuss the principle of God's greatness, you'll find that there are questions you are not opposed to ask. If you do ask, you, you quickly get the reply. You can't ask it. To do so is an offense. You have committed an offense against God. This policy gives people ignorant. If you don't understand, don't ask, because if you ask, you break the law. This is a policy used to deceive people, to prevent people from knowing. God does not teach others to study the Buddha drama for the same reason that the constable does not tell the country people about his superiors in the city. Don't study the Buddha drama, because if you do, and you become a Buddha, you be higher than me. So do not think that you have become enlightened to the principle I just spoke about, because that kind of an enlightenment is false. God is not the Buddha. If you think that God is the Buddha and the Buddha is God, you have had a false enlightenment, not a true one. If there are Buddhas who wished for Nirvana, I request with deep sincerity. Some people do not want to reach Nirvana. They say Nirvana is death. Buddhism calls death Nirvana.